Typically, photography is a medium that's bound up with the exposure of a subject. Uh, it's supposed to kind of reveal something of the person who's in front of the camera. The way that I work is I look for ways that I can disrupt that. I can arrest the camera's potential to see the subject, uh, which in all of my images is me. I use costume and, and materials to kind of disappear in a way. But at the same time as disappearing, I am like intensely conspicuous because the costumes are so loud and elaborate that it's hard to ignore the subject inside, inside the image. Photography as a medium is really invested in this idea of, of visibility, of, of making uh, a subject visible. And I'm looking at ways that I can kind of queer that arrangement. Uh, and create very complicated states of not visibility but not invisibility but somewhere that kind of sits in that weird terrain between those two things. The title of the exhibition is Iridescent. I stumbled upon that word uh, researching discussions in museum studies where iridescent is a metaphor that's used to describe the way that history is not black and white and it's not fixed. It's a way of looking at objects in a collection and the stories that are held in museums and thinking about how they're liable to shift and pulse and change. They shift over time as well as shift depending upon the perspective of the person that's looking at them. So that metaphor of iridescent uh, really spoke to me because these properties, these visual properties of iridescent is something that I'm really alert to uh, when I'm constructing the costumes. I'm using materials that often sparkle and glitter and they glow. And so the term iridescent um, felt like it really spoke to the process I was using in this exhibition, uh, as well as a way of engaging with history and queering the stories of these properties. When I'm using the term queer, I'm not just talking about uh, non-normative sexualities and genders, I'm thinking about uh, ways that people stray from convention more broadly. So people who choose to resist societal norms, to carry on their lives outside of convention. Uh, I'm thinking about the term queer as a process of kind of disturbing the familiar, a process of making things strange. Uh, it's a resistance to orthodoxy. It's anything that kind of moves beyond the boundaries of the conventional. I began the project by visiting each of these sites and getting a picture of the diverse properties that the museum has under its care. My impulse was to research the lives of queer figures that lived in these houses and worked in these houses um, and kind of moved through these spaces. It wasn't as easy to uncover these stories as I'd hoped. Um, these lives don't tend to be recorded in the you know, dominant narratives of these homes. And so I started to think about, well, you know, the idea of kind of history being a fabrication, it being constructed. And so I decided to set out and um, construct for myself a kind of queer counter history by borrowing fragments of stories that I would find in the collection and listening to kind of um, whispers that were dropped by curators. I'm kind of responding to the stories that exist, but I'm also looking at objects that are in the houses. There are times when I will borrow patterns or textures that are taken from furniture or objects within the houses themselves. Or other times I'm looking at maybe jewellery that's worn by some of the people uh, and I'm kind of assembling little parts together, these fragments together to create this kind of uh, fantastic, monstrous whole. In setting out to construct these queer counter narratives, I really wanted to reimagine these spaces and rather than depict them as they are, um, I wanted to kind of transform them. So the characters that I'm constructing uh, with these really elaborate costumes, they kind of enter into these properties and uh, the properties themselves become like stages and these uh, dramatic queer figures, they kind of take them over. They transform them into these 
very strange uh, habitats and they provide a way of seeing these museums, these houses in a way uh, that we wouldn't conventionally see them. The first thing I do is I will set up the lighting in the space and the shot. So I'm establishing what will be the frame and I'm kind of moving in and out of the shot while I test the lighting and adjust the lighting. Eventually then move into the costume and then I kind of shuffle my way back before the camera. I will set the camera on an auto timer and I will take often hundreds of photos. The camera just kind of firing off and off as I shuffle about before the camera. To this point, I haven't really stepped into the costume and I, I don't really have a strong sense of what it is that I look like. Um, so I'm just kind of imagining and moving through a set of poses. Uh, it's kind of somewhere between, you know, um, Kate Moss and Dr. Frankenstein's monster. Um, but I'm, I'm, I'm kind of performing and imagining myself looking really great for the camera. Uh, there'll be a stage where then I kind of shuffle back and I will check on the camera and I'll see in reality I don't look as sexy as I thought I did. And I'll make necessary adjustments and then I move back into the frame and continue kind of shooting and, and, and moving my body. So while ultimately the photographs are very controlled, um, very kind of formally arranged, very symmetrical, the production process of making the work is incredibly unglamorous. It's, it's, it's a physical exercise. It's sweating and it's discomfort. Um, it's gasping for air often. Um, so, you know, there's a real disconnect between how I look in, in the image uh, and, you know, the experience of making the photograph. Typically when I make the work, I use a lot of post-production to kind of massage the image and eventually it takes on this kind of uh, glossy synthetic glow and it starts to feel quite unreal. In this project, I'm trying to showcase these spaces. I'm not trying to make them unrecognisable. I want them to still be distinguishable as the estates they are. So I am a little less generous with the massaging of the photo have to resist my tendency to um, push the photograph into something really graphic and fake. You know, ultimately my approach to making this work, um, you know, comes with a you know, heavy dose of sense of humour and the work is intended to be playful and irreverent. Uh, often historic homes uh, and museums they can be very kind of dry and very sober spaces. And so I'm hoping to invite an audience that may not typically approach the museum or feel like um, they have an interest in the stories of these houses. I'm trying to kind of seduce them into considering these spaces. And I'm hoping that people can also think about how, um, you know, the museum becomes a kind of creative space um, that the monolithic construction, I guess, of history, this very kind of black and white idea of that this is how things were, very facts-based. It's about um, how it becomes a process of kind of assembling and gathering together parts that may speak to you as an audience member, as a viewer, as a person moving through a museum. How you can gather together this material yourself uh, and, and construct your own histories out of that.